Hi, baby. I'm Rachel O'Cool. I'm a pro makeup artist, and I'm literally wearing a necklace that I bought when I was five years old. Talk about inner child healing. When I was a beauty addict back in like 2013, I cannot even tell you how many times I searched foundation routine on YouTube and would just watch foundation routines. Boom, 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 boom. So now I'm like, let me do it. I go crazy, I go intense with my base, okay? But I'm not doing it for coverage, you know? I'm not doing it for anything other than the art. I genuinely love blending foundation, I love drawing on contour, I love baking, and I'm seriously doing it for the art of doing it. So I'm gonna go a little overboard with it. Not to say you have to do the same, not to say you don't have to do the same, do what you love. Here on this channel, I like to bring playfulness and art into makeup, using it as a hobby and stress relief. So if that sounds like you, make sure to subscribe. Stay here a while. Follow me on my TikTok and Instagram as well. I already did the base routine on my TikTok, but it's so fast and so whatever. I want to get a little more in depth, so... Here we go. And all the products are going to be listed in the description below. All right, and without further ado, here is my base routine. Let's go. For skin prep, I literally have to be honest, like... <laughs> I have radiator heat, and it makes my skin so dry. So I literally put on Aquaphor before my makeup. I really like to focus this under my eyes because... I find that it gets really dry under there and mostly like in the center of my face. I have a couple skin prep options like the Welda and the Snail okay. Mucin, but I don't know. When in doubt, keep it classic. The thing about setting spray, what does it do? Does it actually work? I don't know. I never knew the answer to that until I found the Milk Hydro Grip Setting Spray. I never knew that setting spray actually was supposed to do something until I found this. I thought it was just one of those things that's like, come on, we all know it's not doing anything. We just like to spray our faces, right, you guys? <sighs> no. This stuff does what I could only dream of setting spray to do. It makes my makeup look really good, which makes me question, do I love this base routine because of the products I'm using or because of this? I'm not even joking. I got this like two weeks ago. I love spraying setting spray on before foundation because I feel like the art of a good base is in the layering. It's how you layer all of your products. One good way to layer is to use the same formula throughout your process. So I like to spray this intermittently throughout the base. I don't know, I like to think about it like this is the top layer, this is the bottom layer. Inevitably, it's all going to melt together throughout the day. So imagine, oh, it's like a lasagna. It's like a lasagna, and this is the pasta. No, 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 this is the cheese. It's helping it all melt together so beautifully to create one just beautiful finished result. Okay. Next, now really, I need to stop mentioning this product's name until I start getting paid because the amount that I have been talking about this should be illegal, but Charlotte, you know my email, girl. It's in my bio, so just kidding. But anyway, but no, this flawless filter works so well under makeup and as makeup, like literally, I was thinking the other day, I have to wake up really early for a flight and I'm going to LA. So I feel like there's this weird pressure to like enter LA looking really good. Am I gonna do a full face of makeup to like get to LA early? No, that's just not my style. So what am I gonna do? Pop on the flawless filter. Bye bye. Literally two seconds and I look great. I got a darker color than my skin tone. One, because I bought this when I was really tan and now it's dead winter. And I feel like it matches my neck really well and it also gives like this healthy glow. So I'm not, I'm not going crazy, but I'm just adding a little life to the skin. Foundation, foundation. I like to put it on a palette first because I just don't like putting makeup on my hand like it's so annoying. It's really thin. You kind of have to use a good amount to cover your face. It has fragrance. A lot of Dior products do. 
and it is a little bit drying to my dry skin. For $40, is this the perfect product? No. <laughs> There's no second part to that. <laughs> but I bought it, and I spend money on it, and I'm too lazy to return literally anything ever in my life, so here we are! But it does, it looks really good. Sometimes we can talk about products in how the formula is, but we never talk about products and how it makes you feel. What kind of girl are you when you wear this foundation? When I wear this foundation, I feel like I'm 26. But I feel like who I'm going to be when I'm 26, which is like going out to tapas dinners with my girlfriends, getting a sangria pitcher, having my hair blown out once a week, and taking frequent trips to Miami. That's how I describe this foundation. <laughs> my makeup always goes patchy right here. And I think it's because I shaved my face once. PSA, if you're thinking about shaving your face, by the way, I'm going in with more lasagna. If you see like dermaplaning, shave your face, your makeup goes on so smooth. Maybe that's true for some people, but literally for me, it kind of like ruined everything. When I shaved my face, my makeup was never patchier in a way that I've never experienced. Right here, makeup just would not even go on. It was like trying to draw an expo marker on top of an expo marker on a whiteboard. It would just come off. It was crazy. Um, and now I have these patches of really dark hair or patches of hair that are much longer than the other places I have hair. It's just so uneven. So now my makeup always goes on patchy. But if I shave my face, then it's gonna still be patchy. So I'm kind of shit out of luck and I wish I never did it in the first place. There's this quote from Marilyn Monroe and she said that she liked the peach fuzz on her face because when the light catches the peach fuzz, it almost creates this blurring effect on the face. So I'm gonna go with that. <laughs> A new thing I've been doing is contour and blush before concealer. I'm gonna switch that up right now because I just gotten an idea. Because I've been loving letting my concealer sit. So what if I draw on the concealer, then do my contour and blush, and then blend in the concealer? Boom! I just had that idea real time. I do love the Rare Beauty Concealer. It's just good. Like, there's nothing wrong with it. There's nothing out of this world about it. It's really, really good. Nothing else to say. I use concealer to cover up me. I don't really think I, ha I need to cover anything else up. Color wise, I more use concealer to brighten, lift, and pull focus to places that I want to pull focus. I'm going to do under the jawline as well, but I'm going to wait until after contour to clean up that line. So, this is where I conceal. Now, I'm going to micro highlight with a white concealer. This is the LA Pro Girl Beautiful Concealer in flat white. I don't know if anyone else calls it micro highlighting, but I do. It's where you take a shade way lighter than your skin tone. I can only go so far because I'm white as fuck. And you place it in even smaller areas than where you are concealing, highlighting, whatever. It just amplifies the highlight even more. So I like to place it everywhere I put the concealer, but just in a much smaller area. Everywhere I want to lift, everywhere I want to bring focus, everywhere I want to pull forward contouring i like to contour and bronze i'll show you how i do both but i contour first i use contour to create shadow and shape in my face to create shadow i like to use something cooler toned because a shadow is more cool toned the fenty beauty matchstick in amber if you have paler skin perfect contour color this is kind of my updated way to contour my bone structure so i come in i go up the cheek and down the cheek. You see how that creates that sunken in look? I, I love it. Very thin line. That works for my bone structure. I do have a bunch of TikToks on how to make it work for your bone structure based on your face shape. I like to go here and here. This pulls the face up. It also emphasizes the cheekbone here. I learned this from a master class. You always want to put contour and highlight next to each other, but you always want to surround a highlight with contour. So if we're looking here, contour, highlight, contour, it creates a full sphere. You know what I mean? If you were to shape a sphere, ah, fucking hell, mate. 
If you were to shape a sphere, highlight would be here and the shadow would be on the sides. So you need to have contour, contour, highlight. That creates that three-dimensional look. I do a line here and I do some lines on my chin like that. I like to blend this with a brush, the Real Techniques 204, and I always blend, put it down, sweep it up, put it down, sweep it up. And you see I'm angling my face and moving my face to help the brush hug what I want it to hug. And then for this part, I squeeze my brush and I go, and I just blend it down and kind of in place. And I'm moving my face and my brush to help blend. Do you see how that looks really cute and really like chiseled? Finally, I've been dealing with being called pie face and basketball head for my whole life. I have cheekbones. Okay, that was a little vulnerable. Contour is done. I know I said I was gonna do blush before I blend this out, but I just feel like it's been sitting a little too long. So I'm gonna go in with my sponge blend out the concealer. When I blend out here, I like to take it down the side of my nose in a very straight line because that helps to like contour and kind of snatch the nose in like this. When I see people do concealer, like they want this kind of highlight, but they do it all here. They're not realizing that concealer or product blends out. So you don't, if you want product here, it doesn't mean you have to put it here. You could put it here and blend it out. Nothing creases more like too much product. So precise placement helps to use less product with the same amount of coverage, same effect, whatever. It doesn't stretch all the way here though, so that's why I put some more there. Also because I want to stretch this way up. See how I'm using my face to help blend? Little spritz. If you spray a lot, do not move. Let everything dry. After I contour with a cool toned shadow, I like to use a warmer tone to add a little bronze, add a little warmth. I was using the LA Pro Girl Concealer in Toast. That's a really good product, but I just finally got my hands on the Charlotte Tilbury contour wand. So I'm gonna use that. Because I'm not creating a new shape or anything, I'm just gonna do a dot and it's just to add some warmth. For my nose contour, I like my nose contour to be a little bit thicker so it stays where I put it. So I'm gonna go in with the LA Pro Girl and I'm gonna just do a line over my nose like that. If you have less of a bridge um, and you don't feel like drawing on a new bridge because a new bridge just looks weird if you draw it on, try doing your contour like this. It really creates this cute little button effect. But just be wary, the higher you put the shadow, the more bulbous your nose is going to be. The closer to the tip you put it, the more button it's going to look. And I just blend that on the line with my finger. Like that. And then I blend up. And I'm flaring my nostrils to create like a more taut structure. When you're trying to create a natural shadow on the nose, it's best to go warm toned because you get sun there. So it, it looks natural to have a more warm toned placed there. For blush, I don't know. I really love this color of the Rare Beauty blush. It's in bliss. I just love how muted it is. If you are a person who gets sunburn, feel where, you know where sunburn hurts the most? When you really burn your face, it hurts really bad, like right there. It's like so dry and cracked. That's where I like to put my blush. And I always like to use my fingers for blush because I, I think it really helps look more natural, especially with cream. So I kind of smile a little bit. Not to tell me where to blend, but to, to create a better shaped surface to blend on. I don't know, going like this just isn't doing it. But doing this really gives me a nice surface for my fingers to lay. I don't know. And then I do a little on my nose, a little on my eyes, and a little on my forehead. This really just helps bring everything together in a very fresh way. One last spritz. I'm gonna let that dry. So here it is pre-powder. You see what I mean? Like it looks like a plastic shield is over my face because of that milk hydro grip. Now I am going to powder. I do two types of powder. I'm extra, you don't have to be. I take this side of my e.l.f. sponge, this one, the Maybelline Fit Me Powder, come on. 
Like, seriously, it's beating out every loose powder I've tried. Like, isn't that bizarre? So I get a little on here. And I bake under my contour. I really like the flat edge of this to really carve it out. Oh, yeah. There is nothing more satisfying than doing that. Eee. I do my chin. Um, I do the sides of my nose here because this gets really, really shiny and it's my least favorite place to have shiny. So I really want to just like lay that down to rest, you know. Also, if you find that you get smile lines um, in your makeup, no way to fully prevent it. But if you bake right there, it does help prolong it. And then I do like to bake right under my eyes like that just because, again, helps lift. But it also helps my eyeliner or eyeshadow or whatever from smudging down. It kind of creates a nice barrier. So there's a little tip for you. Now for under my eyes. Now everything under my eyes always looks bad. It always looks super dry, cracked, and cakey under my eyes. Like, I'm only human. And I'm scared of filler. <laughs> The only thing that truly looks airbrushed and flawless under my eye, I'm sorry, it's the Charlotte Tilbury Air Blush. F Wait, what the fuck? The Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless fucking what the fuck ever. The Charlotte Tilbury Powder. Why does she make everything so long? Damn! Puff, only way to go. And I do this just under my eye. And a little on the forehead. And it seriously looks airbrushed. It's crazy. I still see texture. I still see lines. I still see dryness. That's makeup, baby. That's just gonna happen. No magic product. The only magic product is Botox filler and a facial every week. So let's not hold ourselves to the standards of extremely rich and privileged people. <laughs> Did I say that? So... After this has been baking for a little bit, I'm just going to take a brush and just dust it off. Kind of blend this a little bit so it's not so crazy. And guys, we're done! Oh wait, one last spritz. Alright you guys, there you have it. My full, in-depth, intense base routine. Again, this is coming from a person who loves to play with makeup, loves the business of discovering new products, loves to play with structure and shadow and art. So this is intense and this is a lot, but this is coming from somebody who is intense and is a lot. <laughs> let me know if you've tried any of these products and you like them or hate them. Let's talk. And let me know what your favorite step of your base routine is. Is it the foundation? The concealer? The contour? the blush but i love to talk about stuff like this i'm such a nerd for makeup so let's talk in the comments come on i hope you guys have such a good day i hope you guys have such a good life and i hope your base routine goes flawless the next time you do your makeup and i hope your eyebrows turn out perfectly okay because i know if you do your eyebrows wrong the whole makeup is gone so i'm wishing that upon you okay i love you so much